Singapore will pump more money into research over the next five years to address a broader spectrum of national needs and create new growth opportunities. This will also enable the country to respond quickly to technological trends accelerated by COVID-19 and develop solutions to emerge stronger from the pandemic. Some $25 billion will be set aside for the Research Innovation and Enterprise 2025 plan. And that's $6 billion more than the previous budget and amounts to about 1% of Singapore's GDP. The bulk of the budget will support strengthening capabilities in universities and research institutes and boosting enterprise innovation capabilities. In particular, 15% or close to $4 billion will be carved out for white space research. The cash will lay dormant and will be activated to support new priorities and opportunities in science and technology. We expect new things to come out. Uh, new developments, new needs, and for which we are setting aside a significant amount of white space so that we can continue to be nimble, uh, to be agile in responding to change. I mean, if there's one major lesson from COVID, is that we must always be prepared for change. Now, research will continue to focus on four already established areas, which are key challenges for Singapore. The next five years will see the strategic expansion of the scope of these domains into new areas of potential that will give Singapore a competitive adv advantage. In RIE 2020, we organise our efforts around four domains to focus our efforts in core areas such as manufacturing and healthcare. However, as science and technology become more pervasive, we must refresh our domains to better drive economic growth post-COVID-19 and address the broader spectrum of national needs. And so there will be a new emphasis on furthering human potential over the next five years. Initiatives include a new research centre on neuroscience and education. The government will also continue to invest in research and development to better prepare for future pandemics. Singapore's most valuable natural resource is its people. To maximize their potential, funds will go into R&D to improve one's health from before they are born up to their golden years. The country's largest birth cohort study will be expanded to examine factors influencing adolescent growth and maturity. So far, the study has tracked the health of 1,200 women since they were pregnant and their children up till around 12 years old. It has shown that a person's early health can influence them physically and mentally later in life. There is also a need to translate research into programs. A new center will open at the National Institute for Education. It will bring together multidisciplinary teams to integrate research across fields like neuroscience, psychology and education. This will affect meaningful changes in schools and workplaces. The government will also invest in R&D to look at how the population ages. Ideally, all of us would like to have what people call a rectangular life, meaning you lead an active and meaningful life for as long as you can. How to achieve this for as many people as possible in Singapore? That's something that we would like to do. And so hopefully, again, through R&D in this area, we will know better what interventions we can make to achieve meaningful, active and productive longevity. To help achieve this, Singapore will study how factors like DNA and lifestyle contribute to health. Those at risk of certain illnesses may get identified earlier and receive timely treatment. Meanwhile, funding will also go towards strengthening research capabilities and expertise so that Singapore can be better prepared for future pandemics. Reducing carbon emissions will be a major focus for Singapore, which is stepping up efforts to fight climate change. It's one of four key areas laid out in the country's research blueprint. It will look into low-carbon energy technologies, such as mixing hydrogen and natural gas in turbines to generate power. Researchers at Nanyang Technological University are exploring a process called methane cracking, which produces hydrogen without releasing carbon dioxide. Sustainability and the Environment Minister Grace Fu says Singapore will also conduct climate modelling to find out how global warming will affect health and food security. Other ideas include using sensors and harnessing data to improve urban planning. 
Some may require long-term R&D investments and effort before we can reap tangible outcomes. To tackle such complex, cross-cutting challenges, we must also look for solutions beyond the natural sciences and engineering. We will tap on other disciplines, such as social and behavioural sciences, since influencing human behaviour is key to creating real change. More emphasis will be placed on enhancing the efficiency of Singapore's air and sea ports through the use of robotics and automation. And that's to create responsive supply chains and ensure the timely export of manufactured goods. It's part of developing new and existing capabilities to help the manufacturing sector grow. COVID-19 has challenged the sector in unprecedented ways and has highlighted the need to build better trade and connectivity capabilities. Trade and Industry Minister Mr Chan Chun Seng says this will also help to create long-term competitiveness and growth of the sector. More support will also be provided to help firms in the manufacturing sector expand into growth markets. The Minister says earlier investments have enabled Singapore to carve a niche for itself in the global economy. And these sustained efforts will be key in helping firms stay competitive. The sector is a key pillar of the Singapore economy. Last year, it contributed around one-fifth of the country's GDP. It is no longer the quality of the product. It is the speed of innovation, the speed of application, the speed of evolution that will make it, uh, that will make us competitive as a system. In any manufacturing process, there's an entire value chain. What we are able and want to do is to make sure that we can provide unique value propositions to people. Also entrench us in the global value chain that makes us not so easily displaced by other people that come up with a cheaper product. Well, Singapore also needs to go broad and go deep in pushing the frontiers of digital technologies. The next five years will focus on speeding up the development, translation and adoption of key tech areas to power the next bound of economic growth and transformation. Cybersecurity is one aspect that will be critical to economic and social resilience as more transactions and interactions move online. The application of AI and 5G technologies also has the potential to transform traditional industries like manufacturing and healthcare. Communications and Information Minister S.S. Warren says more needs to be done to better translate research findings into tangible services and products like autonomous vehicles. The way we should be looking at this is in the efforts that we are undertaking in RIE, as the DPM has outlined earlier, we are looking at not just fundamental research, but also taking it further down in terms of applied research. So if indeed there are certain industry players who are interested in autonomous vehicles, then we have the various strands that can come together to make it happen in Singapore. So the key thing that we should be focusing on is building capabilities in these component technology strands. Singapore will continue to invest in helping companies build capabilities as well as developing research talent to ensure a robust and ready workforce. There will be more support to about 4,700 postgraduate scholarships over the next five years in both local and overseas universities. There will also be more opportunities in areas of strong demand, such as artificial intelligence. 1,000 new traineeship and job positions will be created by next year to help both fresh graduates and mid-career job seekers upskill through hands-on experience. There will also be a series of programs to help grow the research talent pool. The National Research Foundation and Enterprise Singapore will work with partners through a new program to train inventors and entrepreneurs in turning research findings into new products and services.